Hi guys, this is Todd with Real Active Wellness. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about an exercise that we've all seen, we've all done. It's called a leg lift. There are some certain cues that are really critical so that you can get the most out of the exercise. It is true that a lot of people do this exercise and they actually detrain or they decondition how their body is moving or how their body is working. Let me point out a couple things and I'm just going to teach for a moment. One thing that's critical to note is that this is not necessarily just an abdominal exercise. In fact, the primary movers of this exercise are the hip flexors. So in some respects, it's a hip flexor exercise. What the abdominals are doing is not moving the legs. They're trying to prevent movement of the lumbar spine. They're trying to prevent motion of the lumbar spine. You'll hear a lot of people cue this exercise and say, what I want you to do is push your low back into the floor as you do the exercise. Well, I'm here to teach you that pushing your low back down is not a good cue. That is not the idea. The idea is that you want to utilize as much as your torso and abdominal muscles to prevent motion of the lumbar spine. Check this out. When you're doing a leg lift, what's happening is you are using these hip flexor muscles that attach to the lumbar spine. And when those muscles contract and they bite down really hard, they have a tendency to want to pull your low back off the floor. If you do this exercise and you tend to feel some low back pain, What's happening is you're not using your abdominal muscles appropriately or in concert with your hip flexor muscles. So when we see the low back go off the floor as instructors, we, sit, we tend to say, just push your low back down into the floor. Well, that's not necessarily ideal either. You can be pushing down too much. What you want to be able to do is maintain a neutral curve position. The best way to do this, even though it's not super practical, is you put a little blood pressure cuff right underneath your low back. When you lift your legs up and down, how much pressure do you change on that blood pressure cuff? If you push down too much, you'll see the pressure go way up. If your low back gets pulled off the floor because your hip flexors are more active than your abdominal wall, you'll see the pressure drop on the blood pressure cuff. So if you want good control and good core stability, what you need to be able to do is express that you can move your legs while maintaining a motionless spine. Remember, the primary purpose of the abdominal muscles is to prevent motion. Driving your low back into the floor does not prevent motion. You're just putting motion in the opposite direction. You're changing one distortion for another. So when you do this exercise, it's critical that you understand it's a hip flexor movement and we're utilizing the abs to prevent motion in the lumbar spine. If you don't have a blood pressure cuff, which I don't expect most people do, put your fingertips right behind your low back. You see people put them underneath their butt all the time. That's acting as a crutch. Let your pelvis work. Put your fingertips just on the small of your low back. And as you do this exercise, can you go down and up without changing pressure on your fingertips? If you can, great. If you can't, work a smaller range of motion. And as you get more coordinated, you'll be able to extend your range of motion out a little bit farther each time to the point where you can go nearly all the way down and all the way back up and maintain a motionless lumbar spine. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, I'd love to hear. We're on Facebook, Real Active Wellness. Thank you so much.